so from my side, I guess I'm the last turn. I hope you guys are still with me. Yes. I was a little bit too silent. Are you still with me? Yes. Okay, good, thank you. <laughs> I know it's late. Um, my name is Honmi Choi, so please just call me Sunny. I'm Sunny from Sunnyvale, so it's easy to remember. And uh, I'm responsible for business development strategy within a newly established group. We are probably the youngest group within Bosch. We are eight months old, so we were born beginning of this year. And we are probably also the smallest group. And we are called Progressive Mobility Players, short PMP. Um, I will tell a little bit more about it later, but basically what we do is focus on new mobility startups because we see the mobility world is changing a lot. A lot of new players are entering the market and we are focused on two players which are new electric vehicle manufacturers and at the same time also on mobility service providers. Today we've heard a lot about innovative amazing technologies, learning about sensors, learning about battery management solutions, artificial intelligence and human machine collaboration. I mean I've been with Bosch seven years but I didn't know that we had so much capability in-house. I just moved here beginning of this year. So it's amazing to see how much um, capabilities we have. And I would like to bring in a little bit of a different perspective, basically bring in a little bit the market perspective, customer needs, to explain and verify why these capabilities are so important for Bosch and also for the future of mobility. So, before I start, I would like to give a little bit of a bigger picture of why the mobility is changing and what are the driving forces behind. Our world is changing, and this change is visible across the globe. More than 50% of our population now lives in cities. These cities are growing, as is the share of older people in them while space to live is becoming ever more precious. More and more goods and people need to be transported, pushing the traffic infrastructure to its limits and increasing pollution and noise levels. But the world is waking up. Regulations are calling for stricter limits and cleaner solutions. Transformation has started, powered by new technologies and services. In a world where everything is connected, mobility is being reimagined. Solutions like traffic management, combined with cleaner and more efficient powertrains, and the benefits brought by automated driving, will make our city sustainable and livable. Bosch is driving this change and shaping the future. The future of mobility. The new future of mobility, the trends, they're not new for you. But it's still very important to understand the fundamental driving forces behind it because this actually has a really big impact on Bosch because as we learned from UMA, the mobility part makes 60% of our revenue and all of these changes make a huge change or impact also on our business model if we want to maintain sustainable for the future. So air pollution, congestion, urbanization, and also we see a change in consumer behavior. All of these factors are really shaping a new focus for us in the mobility area, which we call electrified, automated, connected, and also shared and personalized, which you probably experience and also live every day. At the same time, mobility is also getting more user-centric. The consumer is more and more changing from owned to shared. So how many of you are using ride-hailing apps to get from A to B on a regular basis? So I see not everyone, but I see a lot of hands raised. So this has become an integral part of how we move from A to B because it brings convenience, especially in congested cities. Also, consumers become more individual and personalized and more importantly, they always want to stay connected. And this all relates to mobility and new players, startups, see this change and these trends as basically opportunities to come into the mobility market because now new capabilities are required and this disrupts the whole mobility value chain also from our Bosch perspective. 
So what does it mean for us? We also need to understand what these new players um, are about to um, develop, what is their thinking, how do they approach innovation. And that's why, as mentioned in the beginning, we are focusing on new EV-based customers. So probably a lot of you know Tesla in this area. So really young companies who are starting vehicles from scratch or uh, the second customer segment is mobility service based customers. So all companies who provide mobility as a service, the ride hailing apps, car sharing and so on. What we see is that they have quite of a different DNA. They have different requirements. And that means also for Bosch, we need to understand the requirements and adjust also the way how we approach customers because these young customers, they act differently, they drive innovation differently than the VW or Mercedes Daimler that we've been dealing with for the past 100 years. So it's time to change and it has also a big transformational impact on us. So we see in the shared space, for example, the one customer segment we're focusing on, a huge change. If you look at the annual number of ride hailing rides, you see a tremendous growth over the past four years. It's been grown more than 60%. From a user perspective, you also see a good reason why they're switching from ownership to shared. One of the reasons is because 96% of, of the time, your asset stands idle. The car is parked, you're at work, it stands idle for eight, nine, 10 hours while you sleep also. This, this is a waste of, of assets. So people are looking for alternative modes to move, alternative modes how to utilize their assets in a most more efficient way. So also this is one indication for why people are moving towards shared. Last but not least from an investor perspective, if you look at how much investments have flown into this area over the past four years only, more than 80 billion US dollar have, have been invested into the ride hailing market. This is humongous. This is likely to grow further. So this shared mobility will happen. So how do these uh, new customers tick and what are their pain points? What are the requirements? These are just some of the requirements or pain points that we identify when speaking to the customer. So operational cost for these ride hailing companies is a huge thing. How can we become profitable? How can I optimize my operations? Second point is how can I ensure safety and security for the, for the passengers, especially when we go towards robo taxis, it will not have a driver anymore being able to control the ride. So we need technology to basically operate and also ensure the, ensure the safety even without a driver. Third is there are so many players, players arising, I need to differentiate. If I want to survive in this market, I need to have a good differentiation point. So personalization, how to ensure that your ride is individual and a really great experience is one important differentiator that we have identified. For all these pain points, for all these requirements that we see, it kind of makes sense where we bring now the puzzle pieces together of the capabilities that we've seen from sensors which connect the cars, can connect the car and the user, and a lot of other use cases that we've learned today. Battery management solutions is super important because we see a strong push towards electrification pushed by the government. Also, end users looking for environment-friendly environment solutions. And also, a lot of these right-handing companies tend to establish their own EV fleets. So range anxiety and, and also improving the battery lifetime, what we learned today, are super, super crucial for the customers and the market. Autonomous driving was something that was mentioned. So a lot of these companies are also going towards robotaxis. So artificial intelligence is also human-machine collaboration to really ensure that there is a safe and also unique experience between the human and the machine will be very relevant. And when we look at the customer and the market and the customers, we see that these um, capabilities will be important for the future to come. So I'm very proud to see that we are working on these very future-oriented topics. And um, this is the way how we would like to tackle the new era of mobility. So basically, in summary, with these capabilities, enable the vision of our mobility customers, not only the new ones, of course, also the existing customer base. Second, we want to innovate and co-create with these customers together. 
because even though we have the best technology, there might be requirements that we may not have seen. So we need the customer input to even more improve the technology and the, also the use case. And last but not least, important point is really to understand and translate what the customers tell to us into technology. And that's why um, it's a good collaboration to have technology and also sales and the market proximity close to each other so that there is always an interlinkage and the bridge between technology and also market need. So we've talked a lot about AI, about new customers, about innovation. But I think it's also important to really close with the core, with the tradition, to not forget about the core business and also the roots where this company is uh, found on. So two values from Robert Bosch, the founder since 1886, have been that I have, he says, I have always acted according to the principle that I would rather lose money than trust. So the trust to the customers, to the market, providing safety is one really crucial element. Second point for doing business also with our customers is integrity. Integrity of the promises we make to our customers in regards to quality and also in terms of the promises that we make to them. And this to the founder and the values still hold to date are priori prioritizing this versus just having a short-term transitory um, profit. So I would like to remind us, all of us, when we speak about future topics, to think about the core values as well, because these are important. And this is how I would like to close the presentation. Thank you very much for the one-hour attention. So you have been an amazing crowd.